But my next question is, how did you have the courage and the confidence to do things differently, given that the stakes were really high? Because, you know, I'm, I'm sure you knew that if Ofsted were to come in and, and see that you completely redone your curriculum, that maybe you were teaching less English and maths and other schools, like you had to have pretty high confidence that you were doing the right thing. So how did you, where did you find that courage and confidence? Um, I think it was an incremental process. Um, and, and the more that we looked at the different elements of what we were doing um, and realised that there was a better way of doing that, the more that kind of built our confidence. So when I, when I first got here, like many schools, I'm sure there was a five page observation form. Uh, that detailed every element of what you of what you like want to see in a in, a, in an outstanding lesson. Ah, uh -huh. um, and you went through and you ticked all the various boxes and you know, so like, well, that, that, that went. Um, and and did we lose anything? No. Did, did that did that inhibit us from understanding what was going on? Absolutely not. And we and we kind of applied that same process um, to to so much of of what we did. Like I say, we, we, we invested a significant amount of time in researching that curriculum and talking to anyone and everyone who was willing to, to have a conversation with us about what our children needed from a 21st century education. And so, you know, ultimately at the other end of that came, you know, I, I, I don't, I, you know, I, I I'm glad it's seen as that, obviously. It's a, it's a flattering thing for it to be seen as courage. But to some extent, it just seemed like the, 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 the only next step. The, the, the clearly what we were doing wasn't uh, delivering for what our children and young people needed. And there was no, you know, you can't possibly look at the situation um, and think, yeah, yeah, we've got this absolutely spot on. This is, there's no way that this could change for the better. Could clearly not. And, the, and then just a logical, um, you know, where, where, where on tablets of stone does it say, thou must teach these 11 subjects? <laughs> this, is, this is the foundation of, of everything, of life itself. Well, you know, that, that's, you, know, you go look at different countries and, and different jurisdictions, different schools, people are doing all sorts of different things and their children are growing up, there are pros and cons to everything. Um, but, but yeah, their children are growing up and succeeding and, and being happy. And, you know, equally, you look at that changing world. Uh, fundamentally, this, the core of what we do hasn't really changed significantly for 150 years. 20, 20 odd years? 20, oh, I keep, I, when, I, when we started on this, I'd say 20 years ago, I left university. It's now 25 years ago. But anyway, 25 years ago, I left university. I didn't have a mobile phone. Uh, I think I just got my Hotmail email address, uh, and I definitely had been on the internet a bit, but but really not much. Um, Twenty years from now is when the children starting at my school are going to be leaving education. The idea that that what they need is what I got at mm. school, that just logically that just can't be right. And so I think that you know going through that process left us with very little choice from my perspective about the fact that well we did need to do something different and we did need to be we did need to be brave about that and we did need to make that decision we put in lots of uh you know there were lots of uh kind of safety nets along the way uh we, we invited Austin in uh, they were developing their new framework and we invited them in uh, as part of their process of developing the new framework to say you know to work with them um, but to get their views on on what that looked like and what um, that you know what their thoughts were on it, so that helped. I say we got lots of people's opinions on that. We we rolled it out in stages over a couple of years so that it wasn't all in one go, both to support our team, but also so that we could check that what we were doing was the right thing. And we have lots of measures in place now to assure ourselves that what we're doing is right. And we, you know, we will be the first, I hope, to hold our hands up if it's not. And say actually no we need to do something differently but but so far i haven't seen that and again it's that logical bit if you look at some of what's in the curriculum and what isn't so we you know one of the elements we place a significant emphasis on now is health physical and emotional health 
And if I look at what we're teaching our children and the impact that's having on them, and what we've maybe taken out around some of the old national curriculum, I, I, I just logically, I can't possibly see that what we're doing has less value, in fact, doesn't have more value than what they were doing previously. Yeah. Now, like I say, pros and cons. You know, in a world with limitless time and limitless resource, there is nothing that isn't worth learning. Ideally, you know, they, children, all of us, would learn everything. Although that in itself would have some cons. But, but you know, they're, they're, yeah. they're, they're, but we don't have that. And so we have to make decisions. We have to make decisions about handwriting or uh, um, fronted adverbials or Roman numerals to take some of the big, you know, headline grabbing ones. But you know what I mean. It, you know, yeah. we, we've, we've only got limited time. So we've got to make choices. And we've made those choices. And we believe that by doing that, our children are getting a better deal than what they did. And, and Ofsted came in December last year um, and we were outstanding again. And, you know, Ofsted agreed. The, the children here are getting a better deal than if we had just stuck with the national group deal. Yeah. And was that, was that a, when Ofsted came in, was that a nerve wracking experience? Well, um, I would, it was my first day back after two weeks of COVID. Oh, God. <laughs> I wasn't terribly ill with COVID. I was reasonably unfortunate, but I wasn't, I was pretty unwell. Mm. And I was sort of sat at my desk at 10 o'clock in the morning thinking, right, what is it I do again? <laughs> I rang and someone said, it's Ofsted. And I was like, yeah, yeah, ha ha. So, no, 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 it's Ofsted. So you know, it wasn't <laughs> the best time, but when is it ever? Um, yeah, I mean, I think I, I, I've st I put a lot of myself into this. It's very much a team effort, but, I, you know, this is my vision my dream of, of what we need to do um, and I put a lot of myself into that and so it felt quite personal mm. and you know we'd always said that one of the risks of doing this was losing our outstanding grade we knew that that was a risk and we knew we felt that was a risk worth taking we genuinely believed in what we were doing we genuinely thought that what we were doing was the right thing for our children and we could see that in our children and our parents could see that and our children could see that then good, outstanding, requires a bit, whatever. You know, that wasn't the important bit. So we knew that was a risk. But equally, it's like, you know, so it's you know, SATs starting today. Um, we don't care about the SATs. But if we do a really good job of teaching our children to read and to be mathematicians and to be writers, and, and we do believe that that's very important, ultimately, for the vast majority, they will probably be able to turn up in an exam and do a reasonably good job. If we are genuinely good at what we're doing and providing good education, and if what I believe, truly believe, that Ofsted are there to make sure that we are doing the best job of educating our children, then Ofsted should be able to see that and should be able to agree with what we're doing.